And good afternoon and welcome to Varese at the Cell Plane Grand Prix. This is day five, beautiful sunny day again. A uh, little bit of a problem this morning with the weather, but uh, we've got nice puffy white cumulus. Just a bit of a recap on yesterday. Uh, in third place, Sebastian Carver. In second place, Werner Armen. And our winner yesterday, Tilo Hollyhaus uh, from Germany. Start from Calcinate, like usual. We go to Roncola, that is this village uh, on the on the ridge of uh, Albenza Mountain. Back to Gemonio, the same turning point as yesterday, just at the end of the ridge of Campo dei Fiori. Then we go in Erba. You already saw the place. Control East reporting point, Calcinate. about uh, gaining time in the turn points, turning as short as we can, and uh, each 500 meters to add is uh, <laughs> seconds. Hi Tilo. Hi. Well done yesterday. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, but it's a complete reset again now. Everybody's level playing field. Ten points off of grabs. How many are you going to get today? Well, I'm always looking for as, as much as, uh, as possible. But getting in the points at all at this very uh, um, high potential field is already a, a, a big goal. So I'm just looking forward to a nice flight and hope to have a lot of fun. It's a very scenic uh, flight today. Uh, so, and if I like to fly, sometimes uh, it also works out good. Let's see. Hello. It's much more fun to talk to you than it is to Roman. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us, how's your competition been? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I was uh, in uh, to, to this year, you yes, mean? Yeah. Uh, so I, I love this airport because uh, it's uh, very nice. Uh, the people are beautiful and uh, very friendly, and uh, there is a swimming pool, so it, it's very nice to be a crew here. This is, oh, he's turning left. Oh, he's going to turn around and come back. This is not a great tactic because he's going to meet everybody else coming, coming towards him. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, Carlos is not really doing a very uh, sensible maneuver there in front of everybody else coming in. I think he must uh, have just realized his mistake. I think he might back. have made a mistake there and he might be regretting it now. We can probably zoom in a bit, Benj, and just see where everybody is now as they come through the line. Yeah, gates open, and mm. the first three looks like uh, Ricky Brigladori, closest to the mountain, uh, Werner Armen, uh, out on the, the flatlands. That would be quite spectacular. From it looks side, like they're very close together. It's only five kilometres wide, that start line. But they can take the, they can run over the mountain into the turn and come straight back onto the mountain. Here we are. See, they're 1,200 meters, 1,280, not far off what we said. Uh, that that height, they can easily run into the turn and back, but it means they'll come back at 1,100 meters. 
And it's surprising how much difference it makes as soon as you get down below the top of the hill. So he decided to continue on the ridge and uh, we will see because uh, it's, Campo dei Fiori is not an easy mountain to get a thermal. It's not very difficult as well, but we will see how tricky it will be to, 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 to find a thermal. So Giorgio and Rasmus are very close one to each other. Rasmus is lower, only a few, few meters. We will see. Didier, up that spine, 1300 meters, and let's see if you can do it today. You gave us such good entertainment yesterday. Yeah, he is approaching Monte San Giorgio just at the limit, just over the, 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 the ridge. We will see very soon if the, if the mine down there is giving good pull up, and we will see if we can get something. At the moment, seems not too bad. Roman's got a good climb now. Okay, now if they get a good thermal and they reach 1700, someone can try to come home. To come home. Yeah, yeah. And Sebastian's positioning himself now for the last leg. Yeah. He's, he's in there, he's the same place, lead group, similar height. This is going to come down to a test of nerve on the final glide, I think, as to who's going to win the day. first day we had four seconds in between the first three places and that's not totally unusual in this sort of flying so they're all building themselves up they're getting ready for this final glide they're all thinking about whether or not they could just risk leaving a bit early or whether they should wait Tilo's not really got enough height to get home, but you never know, he might be trying it. Yeah. Sebastian's, Sebastian's made down. a break for it. Yeah. Roma, Romans is behind him, Max is behind him, they're not going to let him get away. And I think Sebastian's decided it's worth a try now. He's probably got about a 1 in, one in 40, 1 in 38 light, something like that. So we'll just have to watch now and see how this unfolds. But also Lawrence is uh, there or thereabouts on the our final glide calculator, so it's um, it's going to be a big push to the finish. Sebastian is uh, just now got slight edge on the others. Romance has taken a turn. Oh, this could be a big mistake, Romance. We'll see. A turn costs you 25 seconds and uh, that turn will put him behind three, four people. In this competition that's four points. He's taking another turn, he's decided that it's too marginal. He doesn't really want it to be that marginal and he's made the calculation that that extra height is going to allow him to fly a little bit faster. Fantastic view. If you were standing uh, on, the t on that hillside now, you get a spectacular view of these guys coming overhead only a few hundred meters above the ground as they pass over the ridge. to stay above 250 meters otherwise they get a time penalty. Time penalties make a big difference. If you get a time penalty you can finish in first or second place and find that in actual fact you're in the points you're back in fifth or sixth place. We see him coming into the airfield now let's follow them right into the airfield Ben. 
really on the last part of the home straight now. I wonder if Uli is going to be able to take Christoph. It looks like Christoph Rusch has just got a tiny little bit ahead of Uli. Maybe just a fuselage length, maybe just 10 meters ahead of him. Fantastic flight, yeah. fantastic. I was very close at the, at the end. Yeah, it was very close again, uh, all the gliders together, and uh, it seems that the GS1 uh, made the difference. There's three, actually, yes, it is, it's three GS1s. Yeah, yeah, we had a good run at the end, and a uh, good final glide on a glide ratio of uh, 36 to 1, and uh, it was okay. Fantastic, well, very well done. Yeah. More points on the board, that'll put yeah. you back up there. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> well done, okay. Yeah. Uh, were you low at the, the finish? Sorry? Oui? Were you low at the finish? Uh, I was uh, just above 350, so it should be okay. Yeah, excellent. That's good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs>